Right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming out to another installment of our Ask the Editor series. I am really excited to be here today with Lynn Mundell, editor of 100 Word Story. Welcome, Lynn. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sure. My pleasure. Um, so tell us, what is 100 Word Story? Let's jump right in. 100 Word Story is dedicated to the strictly 100 Word Story or Essay. So um, that does not include the title, it's the text. Um, you'd be surprised how many submissions we get where the writers say, hey, here's my 98 word story. So um, yeah, and we are looking for, uh, you know, writing that surprises us, that really extends that tiny format, um, either in structure or in theme. And um, so far we have over, Ten and a half years, we've received almost eleven thousand submissions. So um, the volume is very high for those little stories. Yeah, and so are you open to submissions all year? You know, it's it's funny you ask because um, during the pandemic, we've actually kind of been flooded, and I don't know if that's because people feel the need to express themselves or what's going on, but we have closed a couple of times during the pandemic and we're closed right now for submissions, but we're usually almost always open, but we really need to get, you know, caught up and caught up on publishing because we've accepted a number of um, stories. Mm -hmm. And are you seeing a flood of submissions particularly related to the pandemic or not necessarily? Yeah, I mean, some of them are specifically about the pandemic. Uh, sometimes people will take them and they're just sort of a, a, apocryphal and you can see where that came from. And, um, you know, other times I would just say they're kind of sad. You know, mm -hmm. you can you can read that people are uh, are troubled by what's mm -hmm. what's been going on. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So tell us um, the origin story. I know you and Grant Faulkner started it. Um, what was what kicked things off for you? What excited you about starting this magazine? Oh, you might find this kind of funny. Um, Grant and I have been friends for about 25 years. And we first met at a company called Charles Schwab, where we were both working. <laughs> That's not the typical lit bag origin story. <laughs> oh, it's just fun years. So we met there and became friends. Um, we actually knew of each other beforehand because our spouses had been co-workers even before then. Okay. So the four of us, you know, uh, have been tight ever since. And um so there was kind of a horrible series of layoffs and Grant mm -hmm. and I were laid off and we went our separate ways career wise. Uh, and so, you know, it was, I guess, 11 years ago that Grant contacted me and said that he had, you know, kind of a, a proposal and he wanted to meet and talk about it. So we met at this tapas place and over margaritas, he told me that he uh, wanted to start this literary journal and that he got the idea from his best friend, um, Jacob's father, Paul Hallstrom, who had said to him one time, you should start a lit journal dedicated just to tiny, tiny stories. Hmm. And so Grant thought about that. And um, I've never asked him why he invited me out of his 5 million friends to join it with him or join him with, with starting it. But, um, and so, you know, he told me about the premise and, he said, you know, it's flash fiction. And I said, what's flash fiction? I didn't know what flash fiction was um, because I had, you know, started my writing as a poet and would write uh, creative nonfiction, but I didn't write non tiny stories at that time. So for whatever reason, I said, yes, you know, over our topics and, um, and thus it began, you know, we um, originally were going to name it after a mutual friend of ours we had met at Schwab and decided that uh, for people who didn't understand a hundred word stories, that could, could be even more confusing. And so that's why it's named 100 word story. Mm -hmm. There's actually a journal out there called 101 uh, word <laughs> story, which is, yeah, sort of interesting. So, and so, you know, we built it from there. We built it from the ground up um, and yeah, it'll be 11 years this spring. Wow. So do you have a background in finance or accounting? 
<laughs> no, no, uh, no. I was an English major, and I okay. got my MFA in creative writing from American University, uh, and wrote poetry for many years. Um, and I think, like a lot of creative writers, just tried to figure out, you know, a way to make a living. And mm -hmm. so uh, I worked at a couple weekly newspapers, and I worked in the arts, um, specifically the literary arts, and then. Um, that, you know, was kind of hard and I branched out into, you know, uh, more corporate writing mm -hmm. uh, and landed at Schwab, which, um, you know, was great. It had quarterly bonuses and, you know, I just felt like I fell into a bed of clover. So, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I think actually Grant had done some trading for a while and there was a big joke among the writing team about penny stocks, but um, <laughs> my, my finance is pretty, pretty conservative. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's really interesting. So you launched the journal, but didn't have a background in the genre of the magazine. Did you feel like you needed to brush up and kind of gain some expertise or were you just ready to dive right in? That's a really great question because I have to say at first I was very, very insecure mm -hmm. and it didn't seem to matter that, you know, I had published in the sun and I had been a newspaper writer and, you know, had, you know, some, some chops, I felt really, really, um, out of my depth and, mm -hmm. and hadn't realized that in that genre, there are people who've been writing for many, many years and it's, it was already a tight knit community. And so, uh, we would bring people in and publish them both, you know, the, um, kind of the old guard. And then, you know, we published high school students. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we would meet up at the, um, San Francisco, uh, lit crawl and we would host these readings. And, um, I felt very kind of on the fringe and mm -hmm. felt that I had, a lot of catching up to do as far as understanding who was who and reading and from there you know reading all the way back to like six sentence stories and then all the way up to maybe some consider the top of flash to be a thousand words and really starting to understand what could be done and what couldn't be done mm -hmm. um, but typically with the submissions it's pretty clear right away you know which which are working and which aren't so yeah. That's so interesting. So you had your own like mini private education happening as you were launching the magazine. It's true. And um, so we started it in the spring and in the fall, we um, it's bumpy. You know, you have to start up with submittables so you can get mm -hmm. submissions in. And then we worked off of WordPress and we had the friend we almost named the magazine after do the design. And so there's a lot of uh, back end work you have to do. So by the fall, we didn't have enough submissions. Hmm. And so I said, well, I'm a writer. I'm <laughs> going to write some 100 word stories. And so uh, because I love October, it's my birthday month and I love Halloween. I wrote uh, kind of a trio of uh, I called them scary tales. So they were scary fairy tales. Um, and I, I kind of got hooked, but I also realized, you know, it's tough. You're whittling mm -hmm. and whittling away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned there's like a scene of flash fiction writer. Do you mean nationally or do you mean like specifically to where you were living at the time? I think internationally. Yeah. And I think regionally and, um, you know, we, I don't know Lisa, who's one of the guests, but April Bradley and Jane Martin, who are on with us right now, are very <laughs> respected writers and editors. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there are a lot in the Bay Area. Um, there's a, a great crowd in uh, Colorado. So uh, New York, mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia. So, you know, all over. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. I didn't actually know that there was like this <laughs> culture <laughs> of specific. So do you think there's, uh, are there any um, kind of like rivalries between flash fiction writers and long form fiction? Or like, are there any kind of, because um, I know some, not, not like a serious rivalry, but I know among poets and fiction writers, there's these sort of like, you know, there's respect and there's also like uh, grumbling about, um, you know, getting book deals or whatever. So I'm wondering if there's like a similar thing that you've observed among yeah, flash fiction. That's, that's another really great question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, I think sometimes when I speak with other flash writers, um, they will have 
non-writers or other writers like, uh, you know, novelists or bona fide short story writers say, oh, it must be really easy to write those. It's just a hundred words or those yeah. are a thousand words. And um, so I think sometimes there might be a feeling of kind of like, yeah, it's actually a lot harder than that. Um, as far as, you know, um, I think books, it's very hard to get a collection of flash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there seem to be more opportunities for novelists. Um, I even feel when I look in the journals that there are a lot of opportunities for poets um, for collections. So I think, you know, uh, maybe flash fiction is still trying to kind of you know, get some notice and maybe a little respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, to go back to that period where you're sort of training yourself to do the writing and teach yourself how to do flash, what were some key insights that you got from that period? Hmm. That's, a hard, <laughs> that's a hard question. Or I, I guess just about writing flash generally, like what was something, um, especially if, with your background in poetry, like what was some something that you realized about writing Flash that was like, oh, this is unique for this particular, or there's something I need to do here. There's something writers need to do here. Um, yeah. I'm just realizing. Well, it is very compressed, of course. Yeah. So you have to get in there and you have to set the scene, you know, and ideally, you know, have something deeper going on, mm -hmm. on underneath. Uh, and then you're out. So, yeah. you know, it's very challenging. And for me, when I'm writing it, I've definitely written stories that I felt were technically fine, superficially fine. And then I think there are others of my pieces where I know I kind of went, went down mm -hmm. deep and I got some layers going, which is what, you know, I'm always hoping for um, as a writer and a reader, mm -hmm. you know, that there's, there's, you know, some depths there. Mm -hmm. um, so why 100 words for this for the magazine? Um, well, you mean our kind of our origin story? Yeah, or yeah. Or, or, yeah, I think, you know, part of it was at the time, not now, but at the time there, there was like a, an opening in the field there. Mm. Um, we do predate 101 word story. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, and so it was just filled sort of a, um, a niche, I guess. And, um, and I think what's been interesting over the years is that we hadn't realized that it would be sort of an opening for people who want to try writing, but who are kind of afraid to, or writers mm -hmm. who maybe are stuck in their writing. Um, we've received lots of submissions from students um, we have a lot of retirees who say, you know, I've retired, I've always wanted to write, and I thought I would try this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we've had, um, you know, people from the Paris Review, and they write in and say, you know, kind of, I'm kind of stuck, I thought I'd give this a try. So I think, you know, um, it just filled something that people needed to feel like, you know, I can try writing and, mm -hmm. you know, I can work hard on this, but I'm not going to spend like, you know, months of my life and then have it rejected. Mm -hmm. So it's been fun. Really. Yeah. So do people actually say that in their cover letters? Like, I thought I would just, <laughs> I'm stuck and I thought I would give this a try. Yeah, we have some, you know, <laughs> we should probably publish, you know, a book of the cover letters if we could get people to, you know. Oh, that'd be great. great. Because they're hilarious. You know, people tell us, you know, all the way from funny, silly things to, you know, very poignant things. Mm -hmm. I do have to give a plug for our book. This uh, was published by Outpost, Outpost 19. Mm -hmm. And so it is, you know, some of some really great stories from the, um, the literary journal. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm in there too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Jeez, it is a great anthology. Yes. <laughs> um, which is actually something I wanted to ask. Are, are you, do you have plans for another anthology anytime soon? You know, I, we've talked about it, but I don't think so in the immediate future. Mm. Um, you know, Grant has a book coming out from the University of New Mexico Press. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he's the executive director of NaNoWriMo. Um, oh, right. 
Yeah. And then, um, you know, I work full time. Mm -hmm. I'm AWOL right now, by the way, in case anyone (laughs) in my office is looking for me. Um, (laughs) And I'll have uh, my first book will come out next month. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So and I we also um, we have two kids. And then um, the third very important member of our crew is uh, Barrett Olson. She's our photo editor. Mm -hmm. And she manages the um, the photo story prompts. And um, oh, thank you, Lisa says congratulations. Thank you, Lisa. So, um, yeah, so, you know, um, Barrett also works and among the three of us, we have six children. We have two each. So, and um, despite the fact, you know, they're going off to college or in my case of finished college, it's, um, you know, family life is a lot. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. um, I think if we can kind of find the the time and space, we would, but, um, you know, I do have to say that the publisher, John Romer at Outpost 19 was really a dream to work with. Mm -hmm. And if anyone is looking to do a book, you know, I really recommend that press. It was a really wonderful experience. Oh, that's great. Um, So how, I usually ask this sort of toward the end, but it seems relevant here. I'm curious how you avoid editor burnout and how do you stay excited? Because it sounds like you have a lot going, you work full-time, you have family obligations, um, books coming out, um, all the things, all the life things. So how do you make the time for the literary magazine and how do you sustain the enthusiasm for the literary magazine? Yeah, that's another great question. Um, I, you know, we will log on, Grant and I, and we will read each story and vote, which oh. submittable has made voting more difficult, but they had a, a kind of overhaul recently. Um, but we vote and then we match up if we have two yeses. Um, if we have two no's, um, you know, we'll do the rejection. And then if we don't agree, we'll kind of hash it out sometimes mm-hmm. in person. So um, I find when I am reading, it can seem because they're short that you could you could read 50 of them in one sitting. Um, but I read until I feel like, OK, I'm kind of I'm losing my focus here mm-hmm. and then I log off. So, um, you know, and we do have stories that we will read over and over and over again. We're trying to figure out, you know, what is it that makes this story really good? It's kind of of different. Or sometimes it will be like, the story will be 95%. And it's like, Mm -hmm. why isn't that tiny bit not working? In the past, we, um, in the beginning, I should say, we would try and work with writers on editing their pieces. Um, and then we had one experience that wasn't so great. The person was really having a hard time with, with some suggestions. And we realized, you know, these are short enough that, you know, people can probably go and work on their own. And because of the volume, we probably don't have the bandwidth to do that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's probably like a lot of literary journals. It's a little brutal. You go in and that's a yes and that's a no. And, um, you know, we have tried if we have a long relationship with a writer to kind of soften it. Uh, Grant did write a very nice uh, rejection letter, which um, we've had people thank us for the rejection letter. Mm-hmm. It's so nice. So, <laughs> And are you and Grant the only readers? Are you still there? Uh, yes, sorry. The, it froze for a second. I wasn't sure. Can you? Good now? Um, you are frozen, but I can hear. Okay. Um, all right. We'll just carry on <laughs> and hope it settles itself. Um, so, are you and Grant the only readers? We are. Mm-hmm. We are, except uh, Barrett, uh, our photo editor, handles the um, photo story submissions. And so that's where she will find a photo and post it. People will write in response. Okay. And then she will will call her favorites, and among the three of us, you know, we will we will vote on those. But the mm-hmm. rest of them, it's just um, me and Grant. Okay, so you have um, sort of three tracks for submissions. The screen is frozen. Can you still hear me? I can. It's a it's a little. Okay. You're back. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all that matters. Is you're back. <laughs> Um, okay. So you have three uh, tracks for submission, fiction, nonfiction, and then the photo prompt.
Yes, and we have two other things. Um, we sometimes will interview writers if they have a new book out or if you know something's going on. Mm -hmm. um, we've fallen off a little bit on those. The last one was um, Nancy Stolman, uh, who wrote a book, uh, I think it was called Going Short. I wish I had it with me right now, uh, which is a really great a uh, book about um, writing flash and keeping your spirits up and how mm -hmm. to put a book together. Really great book. And yeah. so we interviewed Nancy, who's, um, oh, thank you, Jane, going short. I got that right. She's a lovely person, uh, teacher and uh, writer. And then um, finally, the last thing we have is um, sometimes we will do book reviews. Um, and those have largely been written by Barrett, who's a professional writer and editor. She does a really good job. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like the $64 million question, but what is the secret to a successful 100 word story? And I'm particularly curious because at this point, over 10 years of publishing these, you must have read thousands. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So almost what, eleven thousand. Not almost, that I'm proud that's, of. Yeah, that's really that's really impressive. Um, so, what what makes a piece jump out at you um, specifically now after you've read thousands and thousands of such pieces? Um, what is what does a piece need to have that's going to make you just stop in your tracks and you know call Grant and say yes, this one? You know, I think it has to get in and get out and there has to be a surprise element and an intimacy um the writer has to be all in um it can't be a little snippet it has to be its own little world mm -hmm. and if you like i can read a favorite of ours um, sure. that we published in 2012 it's called hard time and this is sort of you know we always hold this up as like somebody who just really nailed it so mm -hmm. Uh, Hard Time is by Courtney Watson. Joe ordered his first kit from a hobby magazine sent to his cellmate. The house was an antebellum plantation with a blue papered bathroom and white columns. It had staircases and a library full of tiny books with real pages. The house was populated by little doll people, also ordered from the back pages, who would never ever in their little doll lives rob the doll bank, armed with a tiny doll gun, shoot two of the doll tellers, and be sent to doll prison. It just wouldn't happen. Not when they had a place like this to call home. Hmm. So, yeah. That's really interesting. So what what is it about that one for you that um, you think is so powerful? I think that it paints a scene and it gives these little details and it's taking you through first, you know, you're in the cell mm -hmm. and then you've got this kit and then the little dolls are really, you know, the transport to this man's story. Mm -hmm. And then the, the poignancy of this, you know, this beautiful little kit and this man is in this, this cell. Yeah. It's a little hard to explain what. I, yeah, no, it's really. Interesting I'm thinking, um, in my understanding, so much is left out, and that's what makes it really powerful. It's almost like this ex um, implicit trust that the writer imparts to the reader, because they're not like if I was going to write that as a five thousand word story, it would be he'd been in prison for three years. He this is how he got there. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And this just like you said earlier, it compresses it and it also um, it seems to reveal important information at the end of the sentence <laughs> that mm -hmm. he, he got it in his cell, whereas in longer fiction, that would be like information that you'd put up front for the reader. Um, so th that's really interesting is like, I think that's something maybe writers who are trying out this form could take away from this is like try to leave out more. Um, see what you can get away with cutting out without losing the heart of the story, without losing the essence of it. Yeah, I mean, that one is interesting because it's like you have a hundred words and how are you going to spend them? Yeah. And Courtney spent 
a fair amount of those words, the little doll, this, the little doll tellers, the little, you know, on really right little tiny, of course, it's also kind of a cool story because it's a little scene within a very little story. So it's kind of meta or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but um, you know, so there was a lot spent on that detail and then just, you know, if somebody can do a killer last line like yeah. that. Yeah. That really I, I think the last line sort of elevates it to like, it has a message, right. But it's not heavy handed, but you immediately pick it up. Right. It's about class and social justice and stuff like that, but it's not, it just mm-hmm. delivers it with a punch yeah. um, and it's very clear and you just, it kind of guts you at the end, but it's not, um, it's not heavy handed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. I, I remember think I'm losing you again. I hope it's not on uh, no. my end, but uh, it could be. It's probably on my end. I, I've been having sort of weird internet issues lately. Yeah. I think, um, I think many of us do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we are for the funny Zoom incidents at my yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, small digger. I went to Best Buy yesterday to buy this little internet adapter. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's not fully working well. But um, anyway, I think I think we're back. But um, yeah, that's so so interesting. Somebody once described flash fiction to me as um, you're going like A, D, H elbow <laughs> so there there's like kind of like a steady prog- you're leaving things out there's a steady progression and then there's sort of like a sharp turn at the end mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah um do you see work uh does it tend to focus on like one specific scene like that piece st- or like one specific moment or do you see work also that covers large swaths of time Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I think often it is a moment in time. You know, I think it can be harder to do. I mean, we've had some that are, you know, about like, they're like about apocalypse, you know, and it will just be, you know, Mm -hmm. you don't know where you are in time and there's less detail. But, um, you know, I think if, if people want to try it out, finding a character or a couple characters and a specific moment, you know, um, might be a way to get started. Yeah. Um, and I see a note here from April. It says, please repeat that. It might be because the, um, so I think I may have lost you again. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, we're going to, jump back in sorry for all the weird tech issues but um okay so april asked me to repeat um yeah so i just i think i fritzed out at that moment but somebody um a friend was once describing flash fiction to me and she described it as you're sort of going she's a poet too she's a background in poetry but with flash it was you're going like a d h elbow so that there's like this steady progression that's going in a sort of anticipated direction, though you're leaving things out, right? You're leaving out, it's not A, B, C, D, it's A, D. And then at the end, there's like this sharp turn of something completely unexpected. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. So were you asking about the the sharp turns? And if Yeah, that, that, that was sort of like a, a characterization of Flash, that there's something, um, there's a lot that's being left out. And then at the end, there's like this surprising, there can often be, hopefully, ideally, there's a surprising shift at the end. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if you'd like me to read another one. Sure. I don't wonder. Yeah, I wonder if that would help because mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of speaks to to your point. Mm-hmm. Read it out of the book now because okay. I, lo- I love books, especially <laughs> this book. Very affordable. <laughs> uh, Adult Theater by Tupelo Hassman. I got my best friend a singing telegram, a Pee Wee Herman impersonator. It turned out he was a transve- transvestite meth head living in one room wall to wall with dresses. I know this because at the last minute he called asking for a ride to a gig. He'd gotten into a fistfight with his lover who took the car. 
It's open, he said softly, still curled on the couch, the eye of a storm of tulle. In the car, I pretended not to notice him covering a shiner as he reapplied his rouge that the birthday balloon said, it's a girl. Hmm. So that kind of speaks to, you know, those twists and turns. You get a phone call, but it's, you know, your friend in distress. And then the last line about the balloon is very surprising. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. and very poignant. Also, there's a bit of, I guess it's just that one line, but there's a bit of backstory in there. Um, he mm -hmm. heard, get the exact wording, but he'd called something, something. So I feel like backstory is very hard to pull off in a such a short space, right? You want the action to keep going forward, um, but somehow it works there. Yeah, I think that's that depth, you know, and we get a lot of perfectly well-written stories, but they're a little <laughs> flat, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have the backstory. Um, you know, they're a nice kind of vignette, but maybe they are not an actual, you know, story. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, that's interesting. Can you say more about that? Like what, what distinguishes like a vignette? Like, for, like, I guess I think of a vignette as like a little, a snippet, right? A moment, but a story has that shift, something. Yeah, I mean, the story does have, yeah. A beginning, a middle, and an end, yeah. even if it is compressed, you know, mm -hmm. whereas a vignette may be, you know, yeah, as you said, a scene, maybe a really beautiful mm -hmm. scene. And I love vignettes, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we're looking for a true, a true story. Yeah. Something happened and then this is, you know, what happened. So what are some things that you see a lot of in submissions that you're sort of tired of <laughs> or you just you just, like you want to tell writers please um no more stories you know the classic one in long form fiction is like no more stories with characters waking up from an alarm clock right like we've seen this all a million times before oh Becky broke up again so I oh. missed that so in longer form sorry can you hear me no, I can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, you know, okay. Um, you know, we get a lot of, um, you know, couples having a fight, mm. um, in an apartment and, or we get a lot of, you know, people in a car, a car is a, you know, very common vehicle for a hundred word stories. Um, you know, there's a lot of stories, um, that are very sad um, about losing babies. Those are really tough. And I think mm. you know, some I think are, uh, are from people's experiences and those are tough. Mm. We get a lot of those. Um, yeah, a lot, you know, we get a lot of romance and breakup and CD breakup. Um, you know, sometimes folks will throw in like kind of the shock value or really harsh language. And I think they're thinking, you know, I've got a hundred words. I'm just going to get in there and, you know, make an impression, mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's nothing really better than just good writing um, and unusual, unusual themes, you know, a theme that um, that isn't explored often um, or a scene that um, it may be something unusual takes place in a very, you know, strange uh, location. Um, so I think the surprise is better for us when it's not cursing or, you know, mm -hmm. something really ugly and kind of unresolved. It's better when the surprise is, has something for the reader that we can feel or we can learn or mm -hmm. we can know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's true about any writing generally, that the, the surprise should come from the depth of the character, the depth of the story, the depth of the emotion, not from something shocking, just like a lot of curses or, or something just really bloody. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, there can be stories that are more, you know, shocking or, um, but there really has to be a purpose. You mm -hmm. know, it can't just be to get our attention. You have to get our attention and hold it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are some things that you I, think like? I lost you again? Oh. <laughs> Am I here? Am I back? 
You're back. Okay. Sorry to our audience. Thank you guys for bearing with us. This is uh, it's sort of uh, maybe it mirrors the flash. Very broken up, very fragmented kind of interview. <laughs> Be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for putting up with it, Lynn. I think um, <laughs> it's a writing prompt. Um, I yeah, I I'll, I'm going to take a look and try to sort it out <laughs> very soon. Um, but so, what are uh, what are some things that you want to see more of? It sounds like you want to see more. Like you're always open for things that explore depth of character, depth of emotion, some like just things that are kind of raw and honest. Is that is that fair to say? It is. You know, good writing is good writing, whether mm -hmm. it's six words or it's a six thousand, you know, word book. I don't know, but um, I might surprise you by saying that we would like to see more creative nonfiction. Mm -hmm. We don't get a lot of it, and I think it can be, you know, difficult. Um, but we have gotten some really nice creative nonfiction pieces. Mm -hmm. So more of the, more in the essay field, and we would love more of those. Um, we do have people send us poems and we, we don't publish poetry. So uh, no poetry, mm -hmm. 100 words. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually not that surprised because every editor says they want more creative nonfiction. I don't understand. I, I thought it was such a big, um, like the genre was really, taking off. I don't know why so many editors are hungry for this particular genre. Did that just get, just get totally lost? <laughs> yeah, you're fading in and out. So I didn't catch that. Ah, okay. okay. Um, I, I was just saying that it seems um, every, almost every editor I've spoken to says that they want more creative nonfiction. So if you are a writer out there and you write creative nonfiction, um, send your work out because it, it wasn't, it's not surprising at all to hear you say that because so many editors say that, that that's what they're looking for. They want more of it. As a writer and editor, so I was I was saying that I put in a plug for a couple of uh, the people who are on. April Bradley is a writer and editor, and she has just begun um, a new literary journal called Ruby, um, which is about uh, food and mm -hmm. the meaning of food and uh, stories about food. So that's a great avenue for folks. And then Jane Martin is the Flash editor of the San Franciscan, which is a beautiful glossy quarterly magazine uh, here in the Bay Area that has been publishing uh, interviews and, um, and flash fiction. So um, there are actually so many journals out there for folks and uh, for people who submit to us and maybe it doesn't work out, um, there are other places that submit. Um, you know, 100 word stories. And, you know, we've had people who have tried us 20 times. And on the 20th time, we take their story. So that's great. Um, we don't judge. We love all of our writers. And uh, we're just excited that people want to write. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, you know, don't be discouraged mm -hmm. as well. So, do you have any rules about should people wait like a certain number of weeks or months before submitting again? You know, we never did that. I know that a lot of journals, well, not a lot of journals, some journals do that and I can see why, because the volume can be very high. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, our submission fee is the lowest, to my knowledge, that you can have with submittable. And it's $2 a submission, which people still complain about, but uh, we do need to kind of cover the, our costs. Um, but, uh, you know, we've had people who will maybe... <laughs> sit down and they'll send in 10 submissions, you know, one right after the other. And um, I think, you know, because we still see ourselves as an avenue for students, return writers, new writers, writers who are stuck, people who want to get into flash fiction, but they're a little intimidated. Um, we don't put a lot of parameters on, on the submissions, mm -hmm. you know, um, so. Okay, so what is on the horizon for you guys? You have um, submissions 
are closed now, but they'll open again soon. Yeah, I think we'll probably open it in about a month. Oh, great. Um, you know, and we will hit our 11 year anniversary as mentioned previously in the spring. And I think we will try uh, as things have been lifting to get back, back to get to uh, San Francisco's uh, lit crawl. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we will try and have a live event mm -hmm. uh, in October. Nice. We don't have anything going on at AWP. Mm -hmm. AWP is in, as you know, mm -hmm. Philadelphia mm -hmm. um, in March. And we don't have anything there. But I think, you know, for me, the live events are really kind of recharge me. The last one we had was uh, the launch of our book. Oh, look, it's nothing <laughs> short of. Have you bought it yet? So when we launched uh, the book, we had a big reading uh, mm -hmm. at, at Lit Crawl. Mm -hmm. I think we had like 150 people there. And um, that was really energizing. Mm -hmm. um, and when is the next issue? Or what, what is your publishing schedule? And when is the next issue coming out? You know, we began with issues and we were publishing maybe, you know, eight to 10 stories a month when we began. And we found, especially because of all, all of our children are pretty little at the time and we had, you know, jobs mm -hmm. that doing issues didn't really work for us. And so, um, you know, we publish, we accept and publish, you know, as we get to it, you know, we're reading every week and, um, and so we actually take turns, Grant and I, uh, having each month being the publisher. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so we alternate. We try and kind of keep keep the queue moving along. So oh, that's great. Yeah, it's hard though. I mean, we do sometimes take a while to accept a story. And then if it's at the bottom of a queue of 10 stories, it's gonna mm -hmm. sit there for a while. And yeah. I know that, that can be kind of frustrating for people. I think, you know, uh, when I began writing, there wasn't, you know, web writing. It was you would write a poem and you would send it off to one publisher in a little envelope with the SASE. And then, you know, six months later, you would get your rejection or acceptance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now in the world we live in, there's this desire to really, you know, um, really have things turn quickly and we don't always accommodate people if you go into do a trope we're never going to be in that list of you know extremely fast responses <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be there so we wish we were but um but that's kind of you know how mm. it goes is it uh, longer than six months for a response you know if something terrible is happening like the pandemic mm. yes but, yeah. you know, we're trying to, to get, uh, we're trying to mow through right now, mm -hmm. you know, on a, I'd say a few months. Um, I think I'm losing you again. Am I here? You're back. <laughs> um, so where can people find you? Um, it's 100wordstory.org. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. on Twitter. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, you know, when your story is published, we're going to promote it on Facebook. Uh, we do uh, nominate for um, the best small fictions and best micro fiction, just gotten our um, submissions into best uh, micro fiction. Mm -hmm. That's and, great. Um, yeah, it is. And we've, you know, we've been, I'd say, I'd say for me, it is just ex as exciting to see one of our 100 word stories on the Wigleaf, you know, short list or long list or in one of the uh, annual journals as, you know, if something good happens to one of my stories, it's just, mm -hmm. we get incredibly excited. Yeah. So. That's wonderful. That must be, I, it must be so gratifying as an editor, this story that you kind of discovered and nurtured and now it's on its way. It is, and it's really fun to be able to tell the writer. Yeah. Um, I haven't really been promoting, um, 
you know, our submissions to these, these anthologies, because we're pretty concerned about hurt feelings where someone feels yeah. like, oh no, why didn't my story get nominated for that? And so, mm -hmm. um, so we tend to make a big splash if something comes through mm -hmm. instead, trying to kind of keep it on the positive. Yeah. Oh, that's very thoughtful. <laughs> um we know what it feels like you know mm -hmm. yeah I was just saying because we're all writers we know what it feels like to get a rejection to not be nominated for something of course. um you know I think after a while you develop a tougher skin but you know we just don't as much as possible we don't want people to feel bad or feel mm -hmm. left out we're kind of mm -hmm. like everybody into the pool that's yeah. all right I love that. That's so. fantastic. And it sounds like you publish a lot of first time writers too.